Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you all are fine at your homes. In this lesson, we are going to learn about Python. This whole course is related to Python, its basic features. Anyone who wants to learn Python from starting can come and learn this course. Alright, so let's get started. First of all, you should know that why it was called Python. The language name isn't about snakes, but it's about the British comedy troupe Monty Python. Right? Guido Van Rezum was the creator of Python. He himself was a big fan of Monty Python's flying circles. Being in a rather irrelevant mood, he named the project Python. Next thing is the amazing facts about Python. First of all, Python was a ho hobby project. Python's creator, Guido Van Rezum, was looking for an interesting project to keep him occupied during the Christmas. He had already helped to create ABC programming language earlier in his career and he had seen some issues with ABC, but like most of the features. So he took the syntax of ABC, some of its good features and also fixed some issues completely and had created a good scripting language which, ha which had removed all the flaws. That project that he created and it was succeeded ABC. So that the new project was Python. Second thing is Python is older than Java. Python programming language is high in demand and has grown drastically in the past 10 years. So it seems Python is a new language that got the attraction to its audience and that gave it a boost. But here's a fact, Python is an old programming language and it is even older than Java. Python was initially released in 1991 whereas Java was released in 1995. Python is now almost 30 years old and still stands strong for the future. Next is Python is not a slow language. If Python would have been a slow language, then why would the companies like NASA, Instagram, IBM, CRN use Python? So, what you want to develop that is superior to NASA's operations and need faster language. Python is slower if compared to programming languages like C, C++, Java and more since they are not compiled languages, whereas Python is an interpreted language. Thus, this gives a slightly slow speed, but not very slow. Next is variants of Python. Python programming language is different various for different use cases and applications. Some of the popular Python variants are C Python. It was written in C and most common implementation of Python. Next is J Python. It is written in Java that compiles to bytecode. Iron Python. Iron Python. This is implemented in C hash and is extensively layered to frameworks written in .NET. Next, next is Python. It is a Python language for browsers and it runs in the browser. Next is Ruby Python. It's a bridge between Python and Ruby interpreters. Next is PyPy. It is implemented in Python. And the last one is MicroPython. This variant runs on microcontroller. Next one is Python is a open source. Next, and the important thing is that Python has one of the largest communities in the world and does not have any proprietary license that control who uses it. It is completely open source that means members of Python community are allowed to make their contributions to the Python ecosystem. Next is Python over French. What does Python have to do with French? You are thinking this, right? This one sounds interesting actually. Believe it or not, in 2015, Python took, overtook French to be the most popular languages that are taught in the primary schools. Statistics reveal that 6 out of 10 parents prefer their children to learn Python instead of French. This just shows that many people appreciated the importance of Python programming. So let's get started with the Python, let's get started with our course. Thank you so much for watching this.
everyone welcome back now in this lecture you all will know what python is and what are the key features and applications of python language so what is python python is a popular programming language and it was created by guido van rossum and released in 1991 python is basically used in many places for example if you want to uh, make a game of yourself and if you want to make a website of yourself at that point of time time you can use python what are the basic features of python and why why we have to use python python works on different platforms windows mac linux raspberry pi etc python has a simple syntax and that is similar to english language Python has syntax that allows developers to write programs with fewer lines than some other programming languages. Python runs on an interpreter system which means that code can be executed as soon as it is written. This means that the prototyping can be very quick. Now these are the various application areas of Python where you can use this language, right? This one first one is web development here you can develop your own websites you can develop your different apps next is machine learning and artificial intelligence python is basics for machine learning and artificial intelligence so if you want to go in this line in this um, field then you should know python next is desktop guis another one is web scrapping data science and visualization and software development Thank you so much for watching. Hello everyone, welcome back to the lesson. In this lesson, you all will learn how to download Python and install Python. Step one to download Python is open a browser, window, and navigate to python.org downloads page for Windows. Then. This is the official website of Python which you have to open. Alright, then you have to click on download Python option. After that, downloading will start and then you can move on to your next steps. Th the second step is to run the installer. This dialog box will click uh, this dialog box will appear when you will double click the downloadable downloaded file and then you have to click install now button after that you have to click next and then your your installation will be completed thank you so much hello everyone welcome back to your lesson in this lesson you all will learn basics of python yes the first of all you have to learn is python syntax there are two ways to execute the program execute directly in the command line or create a python file and then save it with dot py and run all right so what do you mean by syntax of python here i am printing a simple abc oh, all right so for printing this you have to write it abc inside the inverted commas and inside the curved braces so it is a simple method by which you can print something next thing is python indentation indentation refers to the spaces at the beginning of a code line python uses indentation to indicate a block of code number of spaces in indentation is variable but all statement within the block must be indented with same amount Error will be given if indentation is not used properly. Example, if true, print true, else, print false. Here, before print, you can see some of the space is present, right? That is the indentation. Now, the next thing is comments in Python. A hash sign is used for a single comment and three inverted commas are used for multi-line comments all the characters after the hash and up to the end of the physical lines are a part of comment and python interpreter ignores them so it will not come in the output next thing is comments are of two types single line and multi-line single line comments use hash and multi-line comments 
use inverted commas three inverted commas above and three inverted commas below the comment other topics that you will cover in the next lesson are identifiers reserved words and variables thank you so much hello everyone welcome back to the lesson of python in this lesson we are continuing the previous topic which was basics of python okay first of all you have to learn what is python variable variables are the containers for storing data values all right variable is something it is an alphabet it can be a letter it can be a word which can contain the values for example here you can see that we are assigning value 5 to x so x becomes a variable okay next thing is creating variable python has no particular command for declaring a variable a variable is created the moment you first assign a value to it okay the uh, next thing is example x is equal to 5 and y is equal to john here we are uh, here we are giving values as 5 we are, we are giving 5 to x and we are giving john to y so when we will print x and y the value of x will come as 5 and the value of y will come as john all right next thing is variables do not need to be declared with any particular type and can even change after they have been set okay see this if x is equal to 4 and in next line we declare x is equal to sally then if we will print x now the output will come as x is equal to sally because we have reset the value of x okay the next thing is case sensitive variable names are case sensitive in python okay next example for this is here it is small a here it is small a and here in the next line it is given as capital a small a is 4 and capital a is sally so a will not overwrite a okay this means that the value of small a will remain 4 and the value of capital a will remain sally a will not overwrite a okay this will create two variables now next thing is variable names okay a variable can have a short name like x or y or a more descriptive name as age car name total volume okay anything whatever you want to write but there are some rules for python variables what are these rules i'll tell you now a variable name must start with a letter or underscore character a variable cannot start with a number okay a variable name can only contain alpha numeric characters and underscores any other special characters are not allowed in python variable names okay variable names are case sensitive for example age is in small here a is capital and g is small next is all the three letters are in capital letters so all these three different variables can be assigned three different values okay now these are some of the allowed variable names and some of the not allowed variable names here we can see that not first of all you have to see that not allowed variable names are starting with a number so this is not allowed okay here we are using a special character dash which is also not allowed here we are using space which is also not allowed next thing is we are, here we are seeing allowed variable names first one is allowed because no other special character is used other than letters all right here we are using only underscore here also we are using only underscore so all these are allowed variable names next thing which what we have to learn is keyword or reserved words in python there are set of keywords that are reserved words that cannot be used as variable names 
function names or any other identifiers these are some of the keywords okay false none true and these are the basic keywords of python now next thing is python identifiers python identifier is a name which is used to identify a variable function class module or any other object an an identifier starts with the letter a to z or small a to z capital a to z or small a to z or with an underscore followed by zero or more letters underscore and digits okay python does not allow punctuation characters such as dollar and percentage within the identifiers python is an case sensitive programming language this means that a b c in capitals and a b c in small are two different identifiers in python now the next thing is how can we name python identifiers here are naming conventions for python identifiers first one is class name can start with an upper letter all other identifiers will start with a lower letter next one is starting an identifier with a single leading underscore indicates that the identifier is private starting an identifier with two leading underscore indicate that it is a strongly private identifier okay if the identifier also ends with a two trailing under, underscores the identifier is a language defined special name thank you so much hello everyone welcome back to the python lesson in this lesson we are going to learn data types okay what are python data types what are data types actually data types are the classification or categorization of data items it represents the kind of value that tells what operations can be performed on particular data since everything is an object in python programming data types are actually classes and variables are instances of these classes these is, these are the classification of data types there are basically five kinds of data types numeric dictionary boolean sets and sequence type there are two base there are three types of numeric data types which are integer complex number and float and there are three types of sequence type which are tuple list and string so we will learn one by one first of all we are going to see numeric data type in the python numeric data type can represent the data which has numeric value in numeric data type you can uh, clearly see that it is all related to numbers all right numeric value can be integer floating number or even complex numbers these values are defined as int float and complex class in python first of all we have to learn integers this value is represented by int class it contains positive or negative whole numbers without fraction or decimal in integers we do not use decimal points in python there is no limit to how long an integer value can be the next one is float this value is represented by a float class it is a real number with floating point representation it is specified by a decimal point optionally the character e or e followed by a positive or a negative integer may append to specify the scientific notation floats are basically used for decimal points okay next thing is complex number complex number is represented by a complex class it is specified as real part plus the imaginary part all right the example of a complex number is Minus two plus three j. You can see it is a combination of a real as well as an imaginary part. Now this is the example of numeric type data. X is equal to one is in int type. Y is equal to two point eight is float as you can see here decimal is given. All right. 
नेक्स्ट थिंग इज जेड इज इक्वल्स टू वन जे हेयर रियल एंड इमेजिनरी बोथ पार्ट्स आर अवेलेबल इन दिस इमेजिनरी पार्ट इज गिवन सो इट इज कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर नाउ द नेक्स्ट थिंग विच यू हैव टू लर्न इज स्ट्रिंग अ स्ट्रिंग इज अ कलेक्शन ऑफ वन और मोर करेक्टर्स पुट इन अ सिंगल कोड डबल कोड और ट्रिपल कोड और राइट हेलो इज सेम एज हेलो और इफ यू यूज थ्री ट्रिपल कोड देन इट विल बी सेम और राइट नेक्स्ट थिंग इज क्रिएटिंग अ स्ट्रिंग हाउ कैन यू क्रिएट अ स्ट्रिंग यू हैव टू राइट द नेम ऑफ द स्ट्रिंग स्ट्रिंग वन हेयर इज द नेम ऑफ द स्ट्रिंग एंड वेलकम टू द गीक्स वर्ल्ड इज रिटन इन साइड द इन्वर्टेड कॉमास विच विल डिनोट स्ट्रिंग और राइट then you have to print string 1 then the output welcome to greek welcome to the geeks world will come next thing is list list are used to store multiple items in a single variable all right list are created using square brackets create a list how and how can you create a list you have to write the list name as similar uh, like uh, the previous string one all right after that you have to uh, write different list elements apple banana cherry 1 2 and 3 are the list elements and you have to write the string in inverted commas and you can write numbers without inverted commas then you can print this list here you can see list items list items are of three basic types ordered changeable and allow duplicate values first one is ordered this means that item have defined order that order will not change if we add new items to the list then new items will be placed at the end of the list all right for example see here apple banana cherry apple cherry and if you write an any you want to add any other thing like uh, you have to add mango to this list then the mango will come after cherry in the end all right the next thing is changeable list the list is changeable it means that we can change we can add and remove the items in a list after it has been created and the last one is allow duplicate values since list are index list can have items with the same values this is the example there are two apples in this list there are two cherries so it can have items with the same value now the thing is indexing in the list and it is one of the most important thing in list okay uh, so i have written a, i have taken a word or i have taken a string i have taken an element of list so uh, it is udemy all right you can see udemy has been taken by me we we can see that u of udemy has been given index of 0 all right d is given 1 e is given 2 and so on all right but when we do negative indexing then the indexing starts with minus 1 instead of 0 y is given minus 1 and when we do negative indexing it means that we have to start from backward direction all right this is something indexing in list now the next thing is tuples tuples are used to store multiple items in a single variable a tuple is a collection which is ordered and unchangeable tuple is unchangeable whereas list in the previous slide you have seen that list is changeable but the tuples are unchangeable tuples are written with round brackets while list they are written at in the square brackets when we have to create a tuple we have to write the name this tuple and we have to use curved braces instead of square brackets all right then we can print this tuple there are three types of tuple items ordered unchangeable and allow duplicate values ordered it means that items have a definite order and that order will not change next is unchangeable tuples are unchangeable means that we cannot add or remove items after that tuple has been created next thing is allow duplicate values tuples are indexed so list can 
or tuple can list and tuple both can have items with the same value all right here you can see that apple banana cherry here i have taken the previous example as we have taken in allow duplicate values of list items so what we have to do here is we only have to change the brackets the brackets will come see the brackets will be curved brackets here all right this is the correction in this particular kind of question these kind of questions can come into your examinations also that which brackets are used in tuple so in list we use square brackets and in tuples we use curved brackets all right next thing is python booleans booleans represent one of the two values either the value can be true or the value can be false when you run a condition in an if statement python returns true or false okay so this is an example when we print 10 is greater than 9 uh, it is the true thing right 10 is greater than 9 so the value will come as true okay if we print 10 equal to equal to 9 that means we are uh, saying that 10 is equal to 9 the value will come as false and the next thing is print 10 is less than 9 it means it is true thing so it is not true thing 10 is not less than 9 right so false will come next thing is python sets sets are used to store multiple items in a single variable a set is a collection which is both unordered and unindexed okay sets are written with curly brackets hello everyone welcome back to the lesson in the previous lesson i was teaching you what are python sets so we will continue with that only sets are used to store multiple items in a single variable okay uh, a set is basically yes now a set is a collection which is both unordered and unindexed okay sets are written with curly brackets and the example of the set is this set this set is the name of the set that i have made and apple banana and cherry are the elements of this set at last we will print this set all right so the output will come as apple banana and cherry all right next thing is python dictionaries dictionaries are used to store data values in the key value pairs a dictionary is a collection which is ordered changeable and it does not allow duplicates okay dictionaries are written with the curly brackets and have key and values next thing is dictionary items are present in key value pairs and referred to by using the key and the name all right the next thing is example of dictionary here this dict is the name of the dictionary that i have made and the uh, brand model and year are three different keys all right then these keys are represented by the values which are ford mustang and 1964 all right so when we have to check that which value is given to the word to the key brand then we will write the code print this dict brand and the answer ford will come all right and ford is the word the value which is being given to the word to the key brand all right thank you so much for watching hello everyone welcome back to your python lesson in this lesson you all will learn flow control what do you mean by flow control a program's control flow is the order in which program's code execute the control flow of a python yes 
The control flow of a Python program is regulated by conditional statements, loops, and functional calls. Function calls. Okay. So we will see all these three things. All right. Python has three basic types of control structures. First one is sequential. Second one is selection, and the third one is repetition. What you will see in sequential is it is the default mode. In the selection, it is used for decision and branching, and the repetition is used for looping. That is for repeating a piece of code multiple times. All right. So the first one is sequential. Sequential statements are the set of statements whose execution process happens in a sequence. The problem problem with the sequential statement is that if the logic has been broken in any one of the lines, then the complete source code execution will break. Okay. So let's see an example of sequential statement. Uh, here we have a sign A is equal to twenty, B is equal to ten. And C is equal to A minus C. So if here we forgot to write B, all right, then what will happen? This code will not be able to execute because without B we cannot subtract it from A, na. So this has been a broken code after that. So if the code is not properly written, then uh, the error will come. And this is known as sequential statement, where all the lines of code have to be executed in a sequential way. Next one is selection decision control statements. All right, selection or decision control statements. In Python, the selection statements are also known as decision control statements or branching statements. The next thing is the selection statements allows a program to test several conditions and execute instructions based on which condition is true. Okay, so there are basically four types of decision control statements: simple if, if else, nested if, and if elif else. Okay, so let's see them one by one. Number one, it is simple if. If the statements are control flow statements that help us to run a particular code, but only when a certain condition is met or satisfied, a simple if has only one condition to check. All right. See here, the code is written, and uh, here condition is written. All right. If the condition is true, then the conditional code will be operated. But if the condition code is false, then the program will directly end all right next one is if else in this statement uh, it evaluates the condition and it will execute the body if the test condition is true but if the test condition is false then the body of else is executed all right here we have two option if the condition is true then the body of if is calculated all right but if the condition is false then the body of else will be calculated all right next thing is nested if uh, if statement inside another if statement is known as nested if statements all right here how can you see that you have to start the code if condition is coming if the condition is true then if body will occur that means the code inside the body will occur and statement just below if will be uh, will be seen in next process all right but if the condition here is false then nested if condition will be seen okay but if this condition becomes true then the nested if body code will be seen and it will execute the program as it should be executed but if this condition also becomes false then is it will come nested else body all right we will do one of the program of this nested if in our program session all right next thing is if elif else if and if else statement is used to conditionally execute a statement or block of statements test expression of if all right here we will test the expression of if if it is true then the body of if will occur 
and if it is false then the test expression of elif will be checked okay if this condition is true then body of elif will come but if it is false then body of else will come all right next third thing is repetition a repetition statement is used to repeat a group of programming instructions okay in a python program we generally have two loops repetitive uh, two loops or repetitive statements first one is for loop second one is while loop all right so we will see both of them now for loop is used to iterate over a sequence that is either a list tuple dictionary or a set we can execute set of the statement once for each statement in a list tuple or dictionary for Uh, in the for loop there are three basic points initialization condition and incrementation all right so we will see that here initialization has been taken place that means the checking of the code has been started next the condition will be checked if the condition is true then the body of the code will come and incrementation will be done all right then if incrementation has been done and condition have to be checked again all right if that condition is also true then the body of the code will again check and again incrementation will occur all right then if it is again true then again this process will repeat but if sometime the condition becomes false then the uh, code will come out of the loop and execution will stop there next thing is while loop In Python, while loops are used to execute a block of statement repeatedly under a given condition is satisfied. Expression is checked again and again here. If it is still true, then the body is executed again. This continues until the expression becomes false. All right. Here we have started our loop. All right. Here we have started our loop. Then condition is checked. then if the condition is true then the statements or the while of body of the while will come if again condition becomes true then again statement of body will come again condition is true then again this will come but when the condition will become false it will exit the loop all right thank you so much for watching this hello everyone Welcome back to your Python lesson. Uh, this is the penultimate lesson of your Python course, and in this lesson, you are going to learn functions and modules. What are Python functions? Python function is a block of code which only run when it is called. You can pass the data, known as parameters, into a function. A function can return data as a result. How can you create a function? In a, in Python, a function is defined using the def keyword. Def my function is the name of the function here, and print hello from a function becomes the value of the function. Next thing is calling a function. To call a function, use the function name followed by parentheses. Def my function print hello from a function. my function here my function is called which means we are calling this function and inside this function we have written the print statement so our output will come as hello from a function all right this is how you can call a function next thing is python module a module allows you to logically organize your python code Grouping related code into small module makes the code easier to understand and use. A module is a Python object with arbitrary name attribute that you can bind and reference. Simply a module is a file consisting of Python code. A module can define functions, classes and variables. A module can also include runnable codes. All right. How to create a module? To create a module, you just have to save the code you want in a file with the extension .py. Okay, so def greeting name print hello name, and we have saved this file with the extension .py. All right, so this becomes a module. 
next is use a module how can you use a module but we can use a module by using the import statement here we are importing my module my module dot greetings all right you can see that we have right here greeting all right we have written greeting here greeting is the name of our module next thing is we are importing the same module import my module which my module is the name of the module which by which we have saved the file all right my module dot greeting janathan so this file is imported into our program thank you so much hello everyone welcome back to the last lesson of python okay in this lesson i am going to show you many programs that will help you to run in ideally all right so this is the first python program which we have already run all right print hello world when we will run this okay let me show you again we have to open a new file this is python ideally all right we have copied it here we have write, written the code here next thing we have is we have to save this what we will do is python dot yes i have replaced it all right now i have to run it when i will run this code then hello world will come this is the first python program all right now we can see second program which is of variable okay before this i want to tell you something else about casting casting variables if you want to specify the data type of a variable this, then this can be done with the, with the help of casting all right i will show you let's copy this and let's just paste it here you can see the code x is equal to string y is equal to int and z is equal to float 3 all right so we have written same values in all those three variables all right now we will run the code we have given the print statement and now we will run the code you can see that here 3 is com coming for int 3 is coming for string and 3.0 is given for float all right i have told you that float will be given for the decimal values and here we can see that when we have casted a variable then 3.0 is coming for float all right so the next code is get the type yes here we can get the type of the uh, variable which we have written all right let me show you okay let's just write the code here here x is equal to 5 i have assigned the value 5 to x i have assigned value john to y then i am uh, getting type x and type y all right so what we will get by this is let's run this see in first one i have written x is equal to 5 which was an integer so int has come class int all right in the second thing i have written the characters the string so the string has came all right so by this code we can say that we can get the type of the variable which we have assigned to our variables all right okay these are some question based on strings the first question is get the character position one and remember the first character has position zero all right so i have told you indexing all right so by indexing we can say that if we print this thing all right let me get the code written here okay this is the code first one is a is equal to hello world we are writing print a and we have given the index one okay so what will come according to you is h is assigned zero index and then e has been assigned one index so the answer should be e let's check 
सी द आंसर इज ई ऑल राइट नाउ यू कैन चेक any indexing value any character which have been given any index all right the next thing is loop through the letters in the word banana okay let me show you this code also yes for x in banana when we will print this code then all the elements all the letters of the word banana will come in different line so by this we can say that loop we have done loop through the letters in the word banana the next word is the len function returns the length of the string okay we can see that the len function is used for returning the length of the string so we have to calculate the length of the word hello world all right so let me do this for you we have written the code here we have saved it and then we will run this okay see hello world total the total is 13 the total length of the world is 13 all right let me explain you h is letter 0 then 1 2 3 4 5 Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. All the thirteen letters have been counted. All right. Now the next is list. List. We can list. Okay. We can print this list. I have made three list. All right. Three list are here. List one. Apple. List two apple, banana, and cherry. List two is numbers, and list three is true, false, false. So let's check what will come when we print all these three lists. See, the values of the list have came as output. All right. So this is how we can print a list. Now the next thing is tuples. It is very much similar to list. right the only difference is that we have to use curly braces and we have to write tuple here instead of list so we will get the value as abc 34 true 40 and male all right now the next thing is boolean all right let me show you what basically boolean does we have written the code here all right see uh, according to you we can see that 10 is greater than 9 the answer should be true all right we can say here that 10 is equal to equal to 9 is it true no na it's false so false will come and in the last statement it has been given that 10 is less than 9 which is also not true so false will come here also okay let's check now see true false and false okay this was the boolean code next thing is dictionaries all right uh, let's do this also i have explained you this code earlier in the data type section that how can we print dictionary we will print dictionary by this code all right let me show you that the whole dictionary will come see brand ford model is mustang and year is 164 and the dictionary has been printed here all right so thank you so much for watching this lesson i hope you all like this lesson thank you so much